around my story. I am Avery, 19 years old. I have two sisters, a white and a black girl. Aria is the eldest. She is 20 years old. She is an angel in appearance and character. Everyone loves her. She is always calm and obedient. Mia is our little sister. She is 17 years old. She has a very quarrelsome personality and always gets us into trouble. We always do not agree in anything, especially if it is a place to go out. But this time, it was a little different. Mia agreed on the place where Aria wants to go out since it is Aria's birthday, and she has the right to choose. But of course, it was on the condition that Mia had the right to invite her friends. The day was very nice in the beginning, until Aaron, Aria's boyfriend, arrived. It was the first time that Mia and I saw him. He was young, handsome, and very polite. And although he was the type that Mia did not like, and she was in a relationship with a young man named Aiden, she liked Aaron very much. Aria realized that Mia was trying to get close to Aaron, and she tried to warn her, but Mia didn't care and went on. So Aria got very angry at the time, and it was the first time to see Aria's features full of anger like this, but she had nothing to do. The party and the day ended. Aria decided to leave because Mia took over the place, and Aaron, in order to try to compensate Aria for this birthday, I booked a camping trip with a group of my university friends. Aria refused at first, but was convinced after a while. The strange thing is that when we arrived at the camping site, we found Mia standing with Aaron and they were laughing. I tried to behave at the time and asked Mia to come with me so we could talk, and I told her that she shouldn't act with Aaron in this way, because Aria loves him and she spoils the relationship, but she didn't like my words, and left me and walked and went to Aaron while he was helping Arya to set up her tent. Of course, Arya got very angry, but at the same time, she didn't know what to do. She was talking on the phone, and after a while, I didn't find her. I looked for her a lot, but it was useless. I called her, but her phone was switched off. I was like crazy. I didn't know what to do. And when I told Mia to look for her with me, she didn't care. Aaron started searching with me, but to no avail. She disappeared. And at that time, when I did not know what to do, a number called me, telling me that Aria was in the hospital. She had a major accident while returning to the road. She is unconscious. I took Mia and Aaron and went to the hospital. The strange thing is, is that Mia was not affected. Nor did she even feel that she was the reason for what happened? As if she was happy. I was very upset with her. How insensitive was she? So I took all my anger on her, blaming her that she is the cause of all the problems that happens to us and that her presence among us has become a great burden for us. Mia kept silent until she reached the hospital. We went to see Aria and then I didn't find Mia, disappeared. I tried to find her, I tried to talk to all her friends, but to no avail. At that time, my father and my mother knew what had happened, and they arrived at the hospital and began to ask about my sisters. I didn't know what to tell them anymore, that my older sister is in a coma, or that my younger sister has disappeared. I broke down and kept crying. I felt guilty, and that the reason for all of this was me who prepared the camping trip, and I was the one who got upset with Mia. I am the reason, and I don't know what to do. I wonder, do you think who is wrong? Me, or Mia, or Aria, who gave up her rights so much? I am Emma, 23 years old. My life seems very normal. A girl has many friends, goes out, and laughs all the time. I wish my life is really normal as everyone, as I was able with the help and support of my mother to live a very normal life to a large extent. Lama and Mary are my best friends, and they are the two who know the problem that I suffer from since my childhood. Now I have been dealing with the situation simply because I get used to it, but I have been going through different periods in my life, times when I really feel that I love food and eat happily 
and feel the pressure of eating. And sometimes I hate eating in a terrible way, but I cannot stop eating. And what happens to me when I eat while not desiring food? It is very ugly, disgusting, stressful, and also vomiting. After that, I will have to replace this food because I am hungry again, and it may happen again, and I keep repeating this. Then I reach this condition. I have to stay at home for a period of up to a whole week. Mary and Lama used to spend with me most of the time. We used to play and laugh and watch movies, and they tell me what happened in college. James was the person I liked the most to go to college to see him, even though I knew that he did not notice me at all. I kept watching him from afar and wanted to give him some of my food and share it together, but I never thought that I could take a step. Even though coincidences used to bring us together outside the university and we would meet in more than one restaurant, I would love to go with Lama and Mary and always eat there. Despite all these coincidences, he never noticed me or even caught his attention. And one day, I saw James with a girl from our university. They were very happy together. I felt very sad. And I asked Lama and Mary to take me home. And I kept crying all day until I slept while crying and even forgot to eat. And this was the first time this happened to me because this day, my mother was not at home. And when she came back, she came to check on me in my room, but she found me unconscious and called for an ambulance quickly. I woke up after three days in the hospital, and I could have died if my mother had been late for a while. I was very upset with myself that I wasted all her tiredness and effort with me over the past years because of my anger at a person who does not know that I exist in life at all. I forgot that I have a rare disease and that I can't stop eating. Otherwise, I might get a big problem that could lead to death. My mother was the only one who got my back since I was a child. I kept trying to find a cure for my illness. She was helpless and very sad the moment when I woke up. The bigger problem now is that it did not stop at the problem of craving for food, which is impossible for me to stop. I am now a patient with heart disease. I saw the doctor saying to my mother when she was broken down, and this is one of the many problems that naturally occur because of my illness. My condition now is much more difficult than before. I am prohibited from excessive movement, travel, and swimming. I am forced to eat all the time. Although food has never caused me a problem with weight, my life has become more difficult, and my mother has to take extra care of me. I feel that I've become a very big burden, and that if I died, the lives of all people around me would be easier. So I decided to take an extra dose of heart medication. My plan would have worked if my mother didn't notice that and forgotten about me even if it was half an hour. Unfortunately, she noticed that my condition was getting worse and took me to the hospital, and they rescued me at the last moment, and I had a new life. Do you think my decision to commit suicide was wrong? Or what is wrong that I continue to live and many people suffer because of me? My Love Betrayed Me Episode A boy discovers his girlfriend cheating on him with his brother. I feel very upset and don't know how I did that. Let me tell you what happened to me. I mean, what happened to us. I'm Mark. My story began when I met a beautiful girl with yellow hair and a very soft and gentle voice. I met her in the motor race that I always go to, as I had no competitor in driving it. I used to take my brother Lucas with me every time I went, but he didn't like to do anything other than sit and encourage me. He used to come, clap, drink Pepsi, and go home alone. He was a strange young man. I don't know if he was introverted or crazy. He loved poetry and drawing, my exact opposite. As for me, of course I don't need to tell you, on race days, girls were around me everywhere, and I did not know how to get rid of them, screaming, following, and chasing me because I won. The winner always wins in everything, love and life. But one day, I noticed a very beautiful girl standing far away, wiping away the tears of another who lost the race. She attracted me a lot, so I decided to make a trick to make her chase me, or at least take care of me. 
but I had to hide from these crazy girls. And I entered the bathroom, cut off my clothes, and hit myself with two very hard punches. First I came out, the girls screamed. Not out of joy, but they were afraid of my appearance. Charlotte was as beautiful as the stars among all the girls. She approached me and asked me about who had done this to me, and I described the boy she was standing with so she could forget him completely. I couldn't describe how she looked at this time. Rice sparkled, her hands shaking. She turned around in the stadium, and she didn't find him in the crowd, as if he had disappeared. Her feeling of pity for him changed became for me, and I was able to hug her when I wrapped my arms around her, as she helped me after I seemed to be dizzy. Then I was a pillion passenger in her motorcycle. We flew quickly, and when we got home, Lucas opened for us and freaked out, and he forgot the poor girl at the door. So I entered behind me, left my bag, and was about to leave. But I won't let her go, and I screamed, Ah, uh, Lucas. And Lucas was disturbed and talking to me. But I didn't care, and was focusing on this beautiful girl who came back to me quickly as soon as I cried out of pain. Then Lucas noticed her and gave her juice and applied poultices to me. Since then, I and Charlotte became friends. Every day we hang out together, and I felt the tenderness and the kindness of her heart. I became much attached to her and loved her. She also kept bringing me presents, and we kept having dinner together, me, her, and Lucas. When we finish dinner, Lucas goes playing music and painting, and Charlotte and I enjoy watching a movie together. We had good times, couldn't be forgotten. But one evening, I went to the bathroom, and when I came back, I didn't find Charlotte. I looked for her in the whole house, and finally, I found her opening the door of Lucas's room and watching him. I approached her and said, What's wrong, my dear? Are you bored? Let's go out tonight if you like. She nodded her head, and we spent the whole evening dancing, loving, and laughing. The next day was my birthday, and I wanted to know whether she remembers it or not. That day, Lucas was so busy. He had a lot of calls and messages, so I thought he fell in love. I entered his room, took his mobile, and found a video of Charlotte saying that she did not want to be with me because she loved him, and she will tell me that today, as her love for me has ended. I was shocked, felt dizzy, and I felt that there was something below. It was a brown leather wallet she brought him, like the one she brought me. Uh, I opened it and found their picture in it. So I decided to kill them both, and I made them a trap. I called her and asked her to come early at night because I invited my friends to my birthday, and I asked Lucas to celebrate with me. He agreed and started to prepare the cake himself. When she came, I opened the door for her. She entered, and it was dark in the house, as if a festive atmosphere. As soon as she entered, I called Lucas and asked them to wait for me to get the juice. Because they are the two I love the most, and the two who loved me the most, and they drank the juice after I put the poison in it. After two sips of it, they fainted, so I tied them together with a rope. I got into the car and threw them into the lake closest to our house. I still feel that I did not take revenge for their betrayal, but I became miserable. Where are Lucas's joy and Charlotte's love? I am alone. Can you tell me how to repent? I don't know what to do.